Dear student, warm welcome to NPTEL phase 2 program video course on geosynthetics engineering in theory and practice. My name is Professor J. N. Mandal, Department of Civil Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, Mumbai, India. This lecture number 51 and module 11, designing with geotextile TU. So, outline of this course is as follows, introduction, geotextile TU, geotextile container, geotextile bag, dewatering of waste and contaminated sediment, geomembrane dam, hanging bag test and design of geotextile tube. So, in India, discharge of untreated sewage is the major source for surface water pollution. One out of five sewage treatment plant is non-operational. Sewage generated in cities and town is about 38,000 million liter per day MLD and treatment capacity exists 12,000 million liter per day only. 80 percentage of the water supplied for domestic use come back as waste water. A huge volume of the waste water is discharged to the surface water bodies without any treatment, resulting in the deterioration of water quality. To preserve the water quality of the surface water bodies, geotextile tube can be used effectively. So, this is the Times of India Mumbai. September 26, 2013. In addition, you also have shown that coastal water how it go for bad to worse and how the sea is sinking. So, what is happening that accepted standard for the facial coliform, a kind of the bacteria is 500 count per 100 ml. Whereas, we observe that facial cal coliform is about 1445 count per 100 as per reported 2012213. So, what is the region? What is the main region? The main region was untreated sewage falling into the sea and our discharge standard are deteriorated. The presence of fascicle coliform a kind of bacteria which causes the number of the diseases. So, we have to take care for this kind of the wastewater because this wastewater is increasing from 46 percentage to 103 percentage as per reported in the west coast of the city in 2012 and the 13. Also, once upon a time that dissolved oxygen can also the reduce and then the lot of feces will be a problem. Also number of defined kind of the diseases may affect the humanity. So, keeping in this 
mind what is happening also in the paper mill deodorant sludge. This is the recycling of the paper mill deodorant sludge. So, this is the waste water and it go for the primary clarifier and then for the deodorant and recover the water again go for primary sludge and again you go for secondary clarifier and secondary sludge and deodorant and then to the sludge again and then you go for recycling. With the recycling you can use for the land filling or land spreading or utilization in the brick, light, aggregate and cement production, landfill capping material and improve soil fertility. So, instead of this very simple way to use the geotextile tube for deodorant the sludge and you can directly the inserted the waste water into the geotextile tube and can rectify this problem and also the waste material can be used for the brick or aggregate or for the land spreading or land capping material and also sometimes depending upon the content of the material in the geotextile tube can be used as a fertility. And if worst case if it is a contaminated it can be placed to the landfill. So, geotextile tube is mainly that it may be geotextile tube, it may be geotextile bag or it may be geotextile container. So, use of geotextile tube is gaining very fast and it has a lot of application like this your erosion control also dewatering problem. So, erosion control you can use for the fine cohesionless sand or the gravel or dewatering you can use the fine grain dead soil or any industrial waste sludge agriculture waste etcetera. So, it is also it is required the vinyl soil cover placed because it is necessary for the UV degradation. Also any accidental damage or intentional damage may occur that also is to be avoided. So, geotextile tube, geotextile container and geotextile bag have a lot of potential application in marine and hydraulics, environmental and agriculture engineering. You know Mumbai has 720 kilometer coastline. The water pollution is increasing in coastal areas. If the sewage water is discharged to the seashore, the river canal and the lake without any scientific procedure, this causes health hazard and pollution. The contaminated sewage water should not be used for the construction and industrialization purposes. Industries dispose huge amount of waste material, contaminated sediment and or byproduct in a contaminated area. The sewage water generated in India is about 6500 million liter per day out of which only 24 7 percentage is treated. India has a vast coastline of 7517 kilometer. Therefore, it is needed to treat the waste material before discharging into the sea, river, lake and canal. The slurry like waste material is very difficult to handle, transport and dispose for the land filling. The geotextile tube can mainly be used for the
the dewatering of contaminated sediment, municipal sludge, dredge material, mining waste and fine grain soil and to protect against soil erosion in river and coastal area, retaining structure, embankment and artificial island. Methane gas generated from the sewage waste can be used for generating electricity. Geomembrane tube can also be used in a seashore of the construction and recreation purpose. The conventional material like concrete, stone and boulder are generally used for shoreline line protection. This kind of geo system is very expensive and not reliable or safe. On the other hand, the geotextile tube can be filled with locally available material like sludge or sand. This system have been used in many countries around the world. In USA, the geotextile tube is used for rehabilitation and protection of the coastal area of the Grand Isle in New Orleans. Geotextile tube is used for strengthening and protection of the river bank in Niger Delta. In Australia, geotextile tube have been exclusively used for ocean protection. Geotextile tube have also been used for erosion control in Kolkata Port Trust, India. Marine and hydraulic engineering, geotextile tube is useful for the reclamation of sand and to protect the island coastline or shoreline offshore structure like dikes, jetties and beach front from erosion and wave attack. Artificial island can be created for playing games and also can be habitable for wildlife and the birds. Environmental engineering, there are lots of environmental problems appear from industrial sludge, municipal sludge and hazardous contaminated soil. These kind of the waste are generated from industrial plant chemical manufacturing plant, sewage treatment plant, power plant, paper mills and sludge mills. Many industry pollute the river, port, docks and harbor. All kind of contaminated waste can be pumped into the geotextile tube for deoterating at the site. This is very cost effective solution. Agriculture engineering. The agricultural waste generated from dairy and hog farm can be inserted into the geotextile tube for deoterating. When deoterating is completed, the solid particle can be collected from geotextile tube and can be used to fertilize crops as well as for various land application. Now, what is geotextile tube and what is made of? Geotextile tube are made of oven, non oven or jute geotextile and length and diameter of the tube are greater than 6.5 meter and 2.5 meter respectively. So, geotextile tube are filled with slurry of sand and water and any other related filling material with the aid of hydraulic or mechanical method. Geotextile tube can be applied in revetment, exposed and submerged, offshore breakwater, protection, dike, containment dikes, training walls and grounds after Lawson 2006 and 2008. So, here is the typical geotextile tube. You can see here this is a geotextile tube and this geotextile tube 
has a length and also has a particular size. It may be the 20 meter in circumference and unlimited length. So, larger geotextile tube like this, like this. So, larger geotextile tube filled with the desert sand acting as a beach erosion control system and here you can see this is the length of the geotextile tube and this is the filling pore and this is the filling pipe or it should be pump and this is one installation of the geotextile tube and this distance about 4.5 meter and length about 100 to 200 meter. So, this geotextile tube may be made of oven and non oven geotextile or the jute geotextile material and also it may be the double layer not only single layer double layer of material also can be used. So, when you will join one geotextile with the other that seems also are critical and also the geometric dimension of the main tube after final pumping and the filling. So, here is the geotextile tube, this is geotextile tube and the slurry pump into the dewatering tube here and here at the base it is a impermeable material may be like a geomembrane and there is a drainage blanket and when it should be filled it up with the slurry and then you apply the load then water comes out from the geotextile tube and then this water pump out from the platform for the rectification for other treatment. So, here geotextile tube on a scour apron in a seabed with anchor tube on both side. So, when you place this geotextile tube, you place a one layer of the geotextile. This is cow apron, this is optional in a seabed and this is a geotextile tube and this you have to sand fill with the anchor tube. So, you are anchoring like this, this geotextile tube like this here. Here is a filled with the sand, this also filled with sand. So, this is a anchor tube and this is the main geotextile tube. So, this is a scour apron. So, this geotextile this is a three dimensional view, this is a side view. So, here geotextile tube or scour apron in a seabed with anchor tube on both sides. So, how we can make the anchor on the both side. Now, geotextile tube can be used in coastal or the river zone. Before placing the geotextile tube over the seabed, a layer of scar apron made of geotextile is to be placed on the foundation soil and anchor at both ends with the help of filled geotextile tube. It can be protect the foundation from wave attack and also act as a filter material because you know that open non open geotextile material is a very good filter material. This is geotextile tube and mattresses for soul line protection. The overlap of geotextile tube is 1.5 meter. The gradation of filling material can be performed as per STM D force 2 to diameter of the discharge pipe is about 160 millimeter to 300 millimeter. The height to width ratio of geotextile tube should not be more than 0 0.5. The discharge pressure on geotextile tube filled with port sand should not be more than 40 kilo Pascal. As the geotextile tube is permeable, excess pore water pressure dissipated and the filling material get compacted. In fact, shape 
of the geotextile tube gets changed after placing over a flat and solid surface. So, you can see here that what are the parameters associated with geotextile tube before installation and after installation the loss in 2006. So, you can see the circumference that C and almost diameter of the geotextile tube is D, but when you place on the side you do not have the same geometry as where you want to design. So, when you place then you can see that size and shape of the geotextile tube. So, here D the diameter of the geotextile tube before installation and C the circumference of geotextile tube before installation. And here H is the height of the geotextile tube after installation. So, H is not the D and this W is the width of the geotextile tube after installation. And if A is the cross sectional of geotextile tube after installation and this is the sigma v that is average vertical stress and this is the small v is the base width after installation. So, you can see that what is parameter associated with geotextile tube before the installation or after installation. There is a lot of variation of the parameter. Now, this relationship for various parameter after installation with the diameter and the circumference before installation of the geotextile tube is given by Lawson 2003. This is the engineering parameter, what should be the diameter and what will be the circumference C. It is a maximum field light is H. So, H related with the diameter will be approximately 0 0.5 D with circumference h will be 0 0.17 c. So, Dr. Lawson has given very nice chart relationship between all the parameter filled with w, w is equal to 1.5 d and w is equal to 0 0.5 c, c is circumference. Base contact with small b is, is equal to 0.9 d and b is equal to 0.29 c. Cross sectional area a is equal to 0.65 d square and a is equal to 0.07 c square. Average vertical stress sigma b is equal to 0.72 gamma d where gamma is bulk density of the geotextile tube field and sigma b is equal to 0 0.24 gamma c. So, he has given very nice correlation between the diameter and the circumferences for a geotextile tube before and after installation. Now, three major property should be confirmed before the installation of geotextile tube. One is the mechanical property of the geotextile, hydraulic property of geotextile and durability. That means, mechanical property of the geotextile tube that means, what will be the tensile strength and the stiffness. So, this is very important to us. So, here this geotextile tube is acting all aspect, mechanical aspect, hydraulic aspect. So, hydraulic property of geotextile tube that is required permittivity, apparent opening size and the discharge capacity and the durability that is design life of the geotextile. So, this is very important to us. Now, we can determine the tensile strength of geotextile tube. Now, tensile strength of geotextile tube has a three direction. You can see here. So, tensile strength along the circumference, circumferential direction here. 
that is T of C. And tensile strength along the axis or length direction that is T of A. And also the tensile strength along the filling port direction that is T P. So, this is the filling port when the sludge or any waste material inserted into the geotextile material. So, E required some tensile strain along the filling port direction that is T P. So, this is given after Lawson 2006. So, Lawson 2006 followed the Palmeriston procedure that is 2002 to determine the relationship between the maximum T C and maximum T A for field tube. The maximum allowable tension T max A is equal to 0 0.63 into maximum circumferential tension that is T max C. So, if you know one then you can determine the other and port connection T P C is equal to 0 0.3 into T maximum of C. So, if you know what will be the maximum T C, so you can calculate what will be the maximum allowable tension T max A and as well as you can calculate the port connection that is T P C with this relationship. Then hydraulic properties of geotextile tube. Hydraulic properties of geotextile tube depend on the hydraulic environment and also on the period of exposure. Lawson 2006 reported the hydraulic properties of geotextile for geotextile tube and also the protection required according to the hydraulic regime. So, this is the chart which is given by Lawson in 2006. This is the hydraulic regime, this is the period of exposure to hydraulic regime, this is intermittent and this is continual. Now, when the hydraulic regime is sealed or slow moving water, so intermittent no protection required and apparent opening size of the geotextile should be less than 0 0.5 millimeter and Q n 100 should be greater than equal to 10 liter per meter square second. If it is a continual no protection required, the AOS value should be less than equal to 0 0.5 millimeter and Q n 100 should be greater than equal to 10 liter per meter square second. If the water current is less than 1.5 meter per second, so intermittent that is no protection required and AOS should be less than equal to D85 fill and QN 100 should be greater than equal to 10 liter per meter square second. So, no protection required in case of continual and AOS should be less than equal to D85 fill and QN 100 should be greater than equal to 30 liter per meter square second. When the water current is greater than equal to 1.5 meter per second, then intermittent no protection required, but some change in shape may occur after the repeated event. That is AOS should be less than equal to D85 field and QN 100 greater than equal to 30 liter per meter square second. Now, continual protection required and some change in shape may occur. That means, AOS should be less than equal to D 50 field and Q n 100 should be greater than equal to 30 liter per meter square second. Now, when the hydraulic region wave is less than 1.5 meter for intermittent no protection required, AOS should be less than equal to D 50 field and Q n 100 greater than equal to 30 liter per meter square second. And in case of continual no protection required, but change in shape 
may occur over time. So, AOS less than or equal to D 50 field and Q n 100 greater than or equal to 30 liter per meter square second. When the hydraulic regime wave greater than or equal to 1.5 meter, so in case of intermittent no protection required, but considerable change in shape may occur after the repeated event or AOS less than or equal to D 50 field and Q n 100 greater than or equal to 30 L per meter square second. And in case of continual protection required and change in the shape may occur. So, AOS should be less than or equal to D 50 field and Q n 100 greater than 30 liter meter square second. So, here AOS is equal to apparent opening size of the geotextile tube skin and Q n 100 is the volume of flow rate at 100 millimeter constant heat through the geotextile tube skin. So, this the nice design chart is reported by Lawson 2006 and this chart gives a good indication of the hydraulic regime and also is very important because you should know what should be the water current, you should know what would be the wave, what will be the height of the wave, what will be the current, what velocity and then what will be the period of export for hydraulic regime is required either in case of intermittent or the continual place. So, from this good design chart, so you can also design and consider this parameter for the geotex design. So, geotextile tube can perform in a variety of hydraulic regime except what the continual water current is greater than 1.5 meter per second and continual wave height is greater than 1.5 meter. In extreme hydraulic environment, additional protection is required for geotextile tube to perform acceptability. Example of additional protection measure can be rock armor or war gabion and matrices placed along the exposed surface of the geotextile tube. You can see here the marine and hydraulic application of geotextile tube. This is called rivet vein. So, this is the geotextile tube and this is the erosion due to the wave forces and this is the field up with the local soil and this is you can see is cover apron, this is the anchor and this side the soil is to be protected. So, you can provide with the geotextile tube and you can fill up with the local soil material. So, this is a one kind of the application in the rivetment for marine or hydraulic application of geotextile tube. Now, also here is another kind of the application of geotextile tube in the contaminant dike. So, here is the geotextile tube and this is rock armor and you can see here the variation in the water level during the summer the water level on the lower side and during the winter water level is on the hard side. And this geotextile tube is covered with the rock of Harma. So, this also the marine and hydraulic application of geotextile tube when is the for the containment dike. Now, some design limit method by geotextile tube lesson given by 2012 that is for external stability. So, for external stability there is a possibility for sliding stability. So, geotextile tube may slide or here 
is the overturning, the overturning stability. And here that bearing stability, you can see that how this bearing stability may occur in a geotextile tube or you can place the one geotextile tube the on the, the another geotextile on the top of this geotextile tube and there is a possibility for the global stability failure or you have to check the foundation cover may occur here or this foundation may be settlement may occur. So, these are the sum of the external stability which you have to take into consideration in the design limit. Now, for internal stability, this is a geotextile tube. So, geotextile skin rupture, there is a possibility for rupture of the geotextile tube. Or erosion of field through the geotextile skin and also there is a deformation of content field due to this load. So, there is a deformation of the geotextile tube. So, these are the internal stability of the geotextile may occur and third durability. Now, this is a geotextile tube, you need the abrasion resistance, because water force causing the abrasion of the geotextile key. So, when there is a water force which attack this geotextile tube and there will be interaction between the geotextile tube and the water and there is a possibility for the abrasion resistance and of course, that UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation due to sunlight. So, you cannot keep open the geotextile tube, always you require some kind of the cover, otherwise there is a possibility for the ultraviolet radiation into the geotextile tube. So, these are the, these are the design aspect limit which we should consider. Geotextile container. Now, this is container is made of oven or non oven geotextile material in case of oven 440 gram per meter square and the non oven geotextile is 650 gram per meter square. Also, you require that tensile strength of the geotextile is generally greater than 60 kilo Newton per meter and the length of the geotextile tube is unlimited and circumferential varies from 1 meter to 15 meter. Normally, volume of geotextile container is about 450 meter cube and depth is about 25 meter. So, here you can see that how the geotextile container is placed on to the seesaw. So, this involves the removal of the river and the harbor bottom sediment from the shipping channel or navigable waterways. So, you require the open high strength geotextile material and this geotextile material you have to put in a empty barge and then you fill with the bottom sediment and then you have to fold it over with the top and then sewn together and then this barge is to be towed to the disposal area. 
So, Popar position is very important where he wanted to place this geotextile container and then you can split the of the barge is open. When you split this, the barge will be open and the sediment fill container drop to the sediment fill container drop to the bottom. So, subsurface embankment are formed and if sediment is any contaminated is there and it never leave to the estuary or the or any other place, it will be remain as it is. That is one of the most significant advantage that this geotextile container will never leave the estuary. So, this is very important where he can place this geotextile container and how he can place this geotextile container. You record the proper position and proper depth and proper placement of the geotextile tube. If you do not properly place, then there is a possibility for the failure of the geotextile container. So, here I am showing that firstly that geotextile container made of high strain geotextile is placed on the empty spill bottom part. Here empty spill bottom bar you have to place and fill up with the river or harbor bottom sediment. The geotextile is then folded and stitched along the entire length of the geotextile container. The barge is placed properly at the exact location for dumping of the geotextile container at the disposal site. Next, the spill bottom barge is open here this spill bottom spill bottom barge is open to drop the geotextile container at the bottom of the seabed. So, you can place the seabed. So, dewatering of the waste and contaminated sediment. Fowler ETL 1996 used geotextile tube for dewatering for the municipal sewage sludge. In lake or reverse side, geotextile tube can be used for dewatering the contaminated sediment. Apart from contaminated lake site, the dewatering process can be applied to municipal waste sludge and the water treatment, mining waste, industrial waste, agricultural farm waste, organic compound and heavy metal, pesticide that is lead, zinc, mercury, copper, arsenic, etcetera. So, here we are showing one the dewatering procedure of a slurry from a contaminated lake. For an example, here for an example, this is a power lake where there is a sedimentary slurry and this is the geotextile tube and this geotextile tube is placed on a impermeable container. This is the impermeable. You can place the geomembrane, then you can place the geotextile material and then you place the aggregate. On the top of the aggregate, you can place the geotextile tube. Now, there is a let us say power lake and this is the sedimentary slurry and this sediment slurry which can be dredged by the cutter head. So, there is a machinery which can cut all the dredged and then pump it out slurry through the pipeline to the geotextile tube. So, this is the pipeline then this all the sedimentary slurry can be directly inserted into the geotextile tube. Then you are applying the load and what will happen? The water will exert out from the geotextile tube and then this water 
wind has a drainage pipe here for water treatment. So, you can send it to the water treatment plant. So, you can have a clean water after processing, you can have a clean water for the use. So, this kind of the system is very simple. Even then, you can construct this embankment using this geotextile tube in power lake surrounding. You can place the geotextile tube, you can excavate it all the sedimentary slurry into the tube and then you can place the another geotextile tube on the place of the existing geotextile tube and then you can slurry can be pump it out and water can be pump it out from the geotextile tube. With this geotextile tube, you can construct an embankment and also you can provide with the different the drainage. So, all the water in this pile lake should be the clean and it should be the discharges out within this cutting edge technology. So, firstly the desert cutter head to be placed on the lake bed contaminated with sediment and this kind of machinery is available. The secondly the waste is desert from the lake bed and pumped through a pipeline to the geotextile tube. The geotextile tube is kept on a gravel platform covered with geotextile and geomembrane. The geomembrane will act as the impermeable membrane to save the ground bed from pollution. The geomembrane may damage due to the gravel layer. Therefore, the geotextile act as a cushion to protect the geomembrane from damage. During dewatering, the excess water drained out from the tube and sent to the water treatment plant for further treatment. The treated water may be recycled to the lake. After completion of dewatering, the volume of geotextile tube get reduced. The tube is cut open as well as solid is collected. Now, this solid waste can be recycled or disposed of the landfill or can be used for the land development or as a fertilizer for crops. So, depending upon the type of the material, so you can send it to the for the recycling, you can send it for the use of as a fertilizer. Also, if it is a contaminated, the entire geotextile tube can be placed to the landfill or you can make that material, you can produce the bricks or you can make use for the any road construction for any stabilization purpose also can be used. So, deordering process is one of the best method for quick removal of solid from waste slurry. Kute and Ardelec 2004 geotextile deordering performance is independent of apparent opening size and permittivity. Higher slurry water content and higher fine result in more piping. Use of double layer of geotextile can increase the retention and enhance the dewatering. Coiner and Coiner 2003 and 2006 said apparent opening size of geotextile is a poor predictor of geotextile tube dewatering performance. Flow rate was found to be proportional to sediment permeability. Therefore, hanging, hanging back test was recommended to determine dewatering performance with in situ sediment. So, some of the major benefit of geotextile tube. So, geotextile tube has suitable 
apparent opening size and is very good as a permeable filtration material, because it is made of oven and non oven geotextile material. It can contain huge volume waste slurry or bio solid as well as dewatering of the slurry can be very fast. Geotextile tube can be cut to remove and dispose the solid particle to the construction site for land development or in the landfill. So, what is the effective of the high volume of containment, efficient dewatering and volume reduction? It is cost effective, no special equipment is required, custom site specific fabrication because this is the man made. So, as, as you want then manufacturer can produce the geotextile tube as per your requirement and lesser equipment cost and less maintenance required and less labor cost. So, this geomembrane dam this is inflammable dam that is open closed type or parachute dam this is closed open type. This is very interesting that you can construct a dam geomembrane dam and inflammable dam can be used for the irrigation and water regulator dam 1998. This inflammable dam is connected with a foundation and fixed with bolt and nuts to a steel frame. It is a cylindrical tube made of synthetic membrane and filled with water, air or combination of both. The height of the tube can be vary by increasing or decreasing the internal pressure with the aid of pump. Here you can see that inflammable dam and the parachute dam. In parachute dam, the upper end is connected with a floating boom and restrained by guys that is Watson 1985. The estudial land can be reclaimed by using the geomembrane bag filled with inexpensive material such as desert soil, cheap rock fill material. So, this is the inflammable dam, this is placed into the anchorage and this is the retained water here and this is the fabric that membrane this length is 8. So, this is given after Watson 1985, Tam 1998 and the Pirariski 2006. So, you can use very easily this kind of the dam, it is very easy to construct and also very easy to use. So, you are just putting the fluid under the flexible pressure, you can putting even the geomembrane dam, you can fill up with the air, you can use to the construction side also. And also it is easy to be the anchor, it can be floated and this is very useful for the irrigation purpose also. With this I finish my lecture today. Let us hear from you any question. Thanks for listening.